Hello and welcome to my channel. On this channel we're talking a lot about robotics and about robotics actuators. And under each of my video about actuators there is a comment about harmonic drive actuator and people saying that this is really interesting actuators. And I can understand this because if we look on the professional industrial robotic arms, especially in collaborative robotic arms, all of them or at least most of them they use harmonic drive actuators. And I think two main features of these actuators is zero backlash and very high reduction ratio. Up to now I did not have a chance to try one of these actuators, but this is gonna be changed today because I have this beauty. This actuator called AirDrive 60 and it's produced by this company, Rosum Robotics. This actuator is uh, quite small, but it's really powerful. The rated torque, not the peak torque, but the rated torque of this actuator is 3.9 kilogram meter, which is a huge number, especially if you look at the size of this actuator. Let's check the other specification of this actuator. So the name is R-Drive 60 from Rosum Robotics. Speed is almost 60 RPM. Voltage is 48 volts. Rated torque 39 Newton meters. This is a lot. Peak torque 54 Newton meters. Backlash is only 0.3 arc minutes, which corresponds to the precision of 0.1 millimeter on one meter arm. And it has hollow shaft. Reduction ratio of the harmonic drive inside this actuator is 100, which I think is quite typical value for such kind of actuators. And this is a closed look on this actuator. So this is the output shaft. As you can see, it has a hollow shaft. It can be mounted either from the front or from the back. You see that it has four wires coming out, two wires for the power supply and two wires for the CAN bus. I suppose that the motor is here. From this side, we have the reduction with the harmonic drive. Here there is a magnetic encoder and also the driver to drive this uh, motor. I also have this electronic board, which should simplify the connection of this motor to the power supply and to your computer. So you can communicate with this board either through the Ethernet or through USB. And this particular board, it can drive six motors. And this is a connector for the power supply. And I think this heat sink is to dissipate the power from the braking resistor. In order to hold this actuator, I 3D printed this kind of piece. Actually, I 3D printed two of them. So I fixed this actuator from the back with plenty screws. Now we can connect everything and see how it works. And I have this power supply. 48 volts, 400 watts. This should be enough. Also, we should connect the motor. And I will use Raspberry Pi to control this board. Before connecting Raspberry Pi to this board, I need to install required software. This is freshly installed Raspberry Pi system. On the website of Rosum Robotics, you can find a Python module R drive. So I downloaded this module to the download folder. And now we're going to install it. Next step, we connect this board to the Raspberry Pi. Oh, this is beautiful. So this is LED which shows that there is a power on the board. Now I will also connect this power supply. So this is the main power supply, 48 volts. And now we need to find the name of this board on the Raspberry Pi. So we need to find the name of the CAN bus interface. For this, we need to do this command. So this is the name of our CAN bus interface. Now let's launch Python 3. After we need to do these commands, this is our CAN interface. Over here, we see that there is an actuator connected to our CAN bus and it has ID 123. So let's define this server. And we see that our actuator is in pre-operational mode. It means that we can communicate with this actuator, but we cannot run it. In order to run it, we need to go to the operational mode. And now our actuator is in operational mode. And now we can set velocity of our actuator, for example, to move it. In this case, I'm going to put 36 degrees per second. Go. Aha. Nice. So I can decrease the speed to 18. Or I can increase it to 72. 
Cool. Zero degrees and it stops. And if I put negative here, it goes to the other direction. Perfect. Zero degree stop. Now I would like to read the position of this actuator. So the angular position. For this, I'm going to use this command. Another useful command is set position. And so if we put the position 10, read the position and we are at 9.997. I think it's quite close. Set position 90 and it's at 90 degrees. Perfect. Set position zero. This is quite fast. So far looks great. Another interesting feature is that with these two commands, you can separately check the temperature of the electronics and temperature of the motor for this actuator. It is extremely important to have the temperature readings and uh, I really like that there is uh, two of them like electronics and also the motor like this. You can check uh, if your robot arm is under stress and if it needs uh, to cool down itself. Another useful command is set position with limits. In this command you set the position but you also limit the velocity and acceleration. Let's see how it works. So we're using set position with limits with the position 180 degrees, so half a turn, with the speed 90 degrees per second, this is the maximum speed, and with the acceleration 60 degrees per square second. Go! Haha, -ha, you saw? It's accelerated, afterwards it went with a constant speed and it decelerated. Let's see it again, so going back, acceleration, constant speed, deceleration. Great! What else you can dream of? Another interesting point is that this command set position with limit returns the time which you would need to make this movement. And this time in milliseconds. Of course, this actuator has the current mode. So for example, let's set one amp. And if I set minus one amp, it rotates in the opposite direction. Perfect. There is also another mode of controlling this actuator. It's called motor trajectory. In this mode, you can set several points and the motor will go through these points. So in each point you set the position and velocity, motor will go through these points with the specified position and velocity. So let's see how it works. I'm going to set three points, 100 degrees, minus 100 degrees and go back to zero and each of these motions should be done in six seconds. And now we're going to use the command start motion. And let's go. First point, 100 degrees. Another point, minus 100 degrees. And it goes back to zero. This is just perfect. By the way, before switching it off, I think it's a good idea to go to the pre-operational mode. So now let's connect the arm. And this is a 3D printed adapter which I'm going to use for this. And now this adapter. It's going to be fixed only on 14 screws. Let's mount the actuator on the support which I prepared. Now I would make this arm longer to see if I can feel any backlash with the longer arm. So I cannot detect any backlash. There is a flex in the aluminum part, especially in this aluminum part and in the plastic parts. But this is what I was expecting. Usually these harmonic drives, they are quite good. And now, in the best tradition of our channel, we're going to check the torque of this actuator. I'm not going to push it to the peak torque, but I would like to test uh, some torque. So for this, we have this long arm and I fixed the base of the actuator. I also have this bag. In this bag we will put some weight and this bag is gonna be fixed here. And this is what I'm going to use for the weights. Now let's go to the zero position but with very low speed and acceleration. Just to be sure because there is a long arm connected to it. Go to the position minus six. So I think this is more or less horizontal. Now let's put some weight to the bag. And one more tiny thing, iPad charger. So with this additional weight, the torque on the actuator should be three kilogram meter. 
it holds let's go to the zero no problem minus six to the horizontal position no problem so it handles well three kilogram meter torque and let's check the temperature I did not push this uh, actuator to the maximum torque because for me personally 3 kilogram meter torque is enough for decent robot arm and I don't really want to break this actuator and zero backlash 3 kilogram meter zero backlash perfect small tiny nice so here in this box I put what we tested so we tested uh, the payload of 3.15 kilograms and the arm itself just this aluminum bar add this torque so in total on this actuator we tested 3 kilogram meter torque and it worked perfectly well. Today we control this actuator with the Raspberry Pi but because this actuator used the CAN bus you can also control it with Arduino. Just to be clear, Rosum Robotics, they sent me this actuator for free but they don't pay me for this video. And so in this video I present my own opinion. I should also say that I had a good experience with this company because uh, I had a problem with the software and I did not knew how to deal uh, with some of the comments. So I write the message to this company and they answered me super quickly, no problem. Thank you for watching my video till the end. Today we tested very interesting actuator. This is a harmonic drive actuator and this kind of actuator is used in many collaborative robots. That's why it was extremely interesting for me to test it. First of all, I should say that I really like this actuator. It's well built, it's super powerful and it's small. We looked at several scenes. We looked at the different mode of the controls and there is a velocity control, position control, position control where you can limit the speed and acceleration. Also, there is a motion points when you can define several points and the motor will go through these position points. And of course, there is a current uh, control. The backlash on this motor is extremely, extremely small. I was not able to measure it and even theoretically it should be like 0.1 millimeters on one meter long arm. Of course, this motor is not easily back drivable and this is normal because the gear ratio here is 100. Overall, I'm really happy with this motor and I'm really happy that I had opportunity to test it. Thank you for watching my video till the end. Don't forget to like this video, don't forget to put the comment and don't forget to share it. Also, you can support my channel via PayPal or via Patreon, all the links in the description to this video. And by the way, here are the names of the people who supported me on Patreon. Thanks to these people, I'm building an affordable robot arm. This is it for today. Stay safe. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.